Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School for Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM and Hopkinton, WACA TV in Ashland, and HCAT and Hollison. Tom Nappy alongside Larry Sacklad for the call, Cameron Tabud on camera. And tonight it is Ashland Post 77 taking on Hudson Post 100. Should be a great game here today. Ashland has taken the field. It's going to be Ben Fink on the mound to try to take down Hudson Post 100, who is currently second place in the zone. Let's take a look at the Hudson Post 100 lineup. Starting things off is center fielder Sam Stout, batting second shortstop Michael Ryan. Michael Chaves, the catcher, batting third, Noah Stewart, the first baseman hitting cleanup. Connor Ogerholm, the pitcher, hitting fifth. Lance Geraz, the second baseman, hitting sixth. Matt Gerard, the right fielder, hitting seventh. Chris Lennox, the third baseman, hitting eighth. Tyler Ogerholm, the left fielder, hitting ninth. And with the post-77 defense, here is Larry Sacklad. Oh, sorry. Uh, playing third base today is uh, Dom Kavanaugh, Jackson Hornung at shortstop. Cole Glassburn playing second base. Alex O'Malfi over at first. In left field, Sam Farrell. Center field, Brandon Grover. Nick Calabrese in right field. Sean Jewett behind the plate, catching Ben Fink. And we have the first hitter about to step in. That'll be Sam Stout, the center fielder. Ben Fink on the mound today for post 77. We'll get you the stats on him in just a moment. He has had a good season on the mound for post 77. Of course, the last time these two teams met, we'll have a lot was to a say about it. 17 to 3 post 77 victory. Certainly can't beat that. And here we go. We are off and ready to rock. Ashland Legion Baseball. And the first pitch fouled away. 0 and 1. Not a whole lot of hitting, Tom, uh, by Hudson. Post 100 last time. Wind up in the pitch. And it's 1 and 1. But a whole lot of something else last game. Yep. Hudson came in here last intensity. year. And uh, beat Ashley in two to one. And this is hit in the air over to left field, and it's caught one away. That'll bring up Michael Ryan, the shortstop. And he was involved in the uh, events of last week, right in the middle of things. Fiery shortstop, graduate of Marlboro High, playing at Framingham State. And Larry, for Ben Fink, he's pitched seven innings this season, a zero ERA. He's started one game, and he's 1-0. and oh. First pitch, a strike to Michael Ryan. One, zero oh and one. Wind up and the pitch. There's a ball, one and one. Mike Ryan was decked last week uh, by the barber, Dom Kavanaugh. There's another strike. Not intentional. Just got him right on the shoulder. And he was down on the ground for a couple minutes and finally was able to finish the game. And there's a the ball, two and two. He did literally finish the game with a strikeout, but at that point, it was a mercy situation. There it is. There's a strikeout for Ben Fink. Two away. I already saw something. Michael Chaves, the catcher. I'm sorry. I already didn't mean to step on you. But I already saw something I didn't like. Hopefully there were warnings passed out to both teams. But I saw a uh, look back to the pitcher's mound after the last strikeout. So see what happens. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. Oh, and one on Chaves. Oh, and one on Chaves. He's and a Worcester State product. 
Fink set to deal, and this is hit up the left side foul. Oh, and two. Into the overflow crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big crowd today. Javes pitched last uh, week, relieved uh, Stout. And this is hit in the air, right side, foul territory out of the reach of everybody. I'm sorry, he relieved Noah Stewart, who couldn't get out of the second inning. He had walked seven by that time, and Chaves came in up to the fifth inning and gave way to Lennox. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Cameron Tabot on camera, and that one's fouled away. Oh, and two remains the count. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the left side. Fair ball picked up by the pitcher, Fink. Throw to first. No problem. One to three for out number three. To the bottom of the first we go. We are scoreless on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the first inning. Coming up for post 77, top of the order, Sam Farrell, Brandon Grover, Jackson Hornung to start things off against the pitcher, Kane Ojarheim for Hudson, post 100. And we'll get you the Hudson defense in just a moment from Larry Sacklad. Right now, Sam Farrell set to step in, trying to get things started for post 100. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. 0 oh and 1. And with the Hudson defense here is Larry Sacklap. Chris Lennox is playing third base. Michael Ryan at second base. Fly ball, right field. Camped under it. Mike Gerard makes the catch. Lori Gerard's at second base. Noah Stewart, last week's starting pitcher at first base. Tyler Ogerholm in left, Sam Stout in center. Mike Gerard just made that catch in right. Michael Chaves behind the place, catching Connor Ogerholm, a Rivers graduate. And there's a strike to Brandon Grover. Oh, and one. And Larry, how crucial do you think this game is, the post-77, after losing yesterday? Well, yesterday they had nine guys, and they played like they had nine guys. They just had nothing, no energy, and they faced the kid that threw about 60 miles an hour, and they couldn't do anything with him, except they had a third baseman that could really, really play. Do you think getting back on the winning track is very important today. No, I think they should lose the rest of their games and tank it. <laughs> no, yes, abso absolutely they want to put it away tonight and uh, do what they need to do to get ready for the playoffs. Here's the 0-2. This is hit in the air over to center field. That'll drop down for a one-out base hit by Brendan Grover, a one-out single. That'll bring up Jackson Hornung, the shortstop. Now, Larry, they were short yesterday. They had 10 guys available on the roster against a desperate Bill Rickett team that's right in the hunt of the playoffs. And now they seem to have most of their team available here today. Do you think that's going to change the momentum and change the direction that they're going in today? As this is hit in the air, over to left field. That'll drop down, rolls all the way to the wall. Lead runner being waved around. He will score easily. Here comes Brennan Grover, Hornung on his way to third. It's an RBI triple. Just like that, one nothing post 77. And you know what? They were shorthanded yesterday. They, they did not have most of their guys, but they have a lot of them today. And Jackson Horning already making it one to nothing. That's two games in a row. He's led off with triples. Here's Dom Cavanaugh. And this is hit in the air, right side foul. And I'll tell you, Larry, already the dugout for post-77 making a whole lot more noise than they did yesterday. Yeah, well, they just keep it going, keep the Hudson bench quiet, and uh, put up a 12 spot, and we can go home. One and one on Kavanaugh. 
Wind up and the pitch. And that is outside, two and one. Dom Cavanaugh right in the middle of the shenanigans last week. Hit a couple of batters. Talked a little bit of smack, but his new nickname is the Barber. Connor Osherholm delivers a strike, two and two. Now, Hudson posted on their Twitter that they were shorthanded last game against Ashland. That's why they lost. Uh, Do you think that's the reason? Uh, can I say this on cable? Absolutely. Just don't swear. <laughs> All right, that's a bunch of BS. <laughs> Out number two, Sean Jewett. Probably the hottest hitter in the lineup will come up to the plate. Yeah, so for those over 70 years old, there was a pitcher named Sal Magley, and he used to pitch tight, and every hitter knew it. This hit in the air, fouled away, 0 oh and 1. And he had the nickname the Barber because he always gave every hitter a close shave. Sean Jewett yesterday went 0 for 3, so I think. Based on his uh, statistics so far, he's overdue for a hit. And there it is, up the right side, and it's past the reach of the second baseman. Throw to first, not in time. And a run scores. 2 nothing. post 77, an RBI single for Jewett. Sparky Jewett. 2 to nothing. post 77, Alex M. Alfie steps in. Well, based on this, po based on the uh, mentality of this post seventy seven team, after a loss like yesterday, no runs. I don't think this is a team that'll stay cold for long. Up the left side, Obed has it. Throw to the pitcher. Got him. <laughs> he got him. He well, can still play. Alex hit one off his foot yesterday and. It was uh, touch and go as to whether he was going to get back in the game, and he's limping a little bit today. I heard the Worcester Red Sox here scouting Obed. This is hit in the air foul. 0-2. Oh Larry, how much do you think Obed wants to get out there and play the outfield? Really bad. I think, really, really bad. I mean, he certainly could. Very athletic guy. He's got to shave his beard, though. Hit high in the air, fair territory. Third baseman catches it. And that'll wrap up the bottom of the first, but guess what? Post 77 plates two runs. It's two to nothing. Heading to the top of the second on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the second inning, four, five, and six to up. Noah Stewart, Connor Ogerholm, and Lance Geraz to face Ben Fink. And Larry, I don't know about you, but I think Ben Fink has pitched pretty well this season. Eight scoreless yep. so far. Absolutely. Eight scoreless innings, a 571 whip. One win, no losses, one game started. Well, this is his second game here. We'll see how he does. But I think Ben Fink could certainly be a huge asset in the playoffs, but this one's hit up the middle, leadoff single for Noah Stewart, the cleanup hitter. That'll bring up Connor Ogerholm, the pitcher. Now, Larry, after the intensity of last game against Hudson in Hudson, how much do you think this post-100 team is coming into today saying, we need to win, we need to prove ourselves after getting whipped 17-3? Sort of like oxygen. <laughs> they, have so. to ha they have to have it. And... They'd like to put a beat down on post one, uh, post 77, but they got to have the horses to do it. But then you look at post 77 after the last game, losing three to nothing, as this is hit up the right side. That'll get through for a hit. It'll be first and second with no outs. Osier home reaches on the single. That'll bring up Lance Geraz. But after the last game for post 77, a tough three to nothing loss against Bill Ricca. No momentum with the bats whatsoever. Even though you got the number one seed at hand and your magic number is one, how desperate do you think post 77 is for that name? No, uh, the, they've got game? two more games to do it. Foul ball out of play. 
But he's going with Ben Fink. He's still got plenty of arms to go to his entire stable if he wants to just put it away tonight. That pitch is low, one and one on Jaraz. Well, this means a lot to post 100 after that serious beatdown they took last week. Oh, I'd say so. And Fink. I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Fink set the deal. That's fouled away. Two and one. I think that's what sparked a lot of the commotion is they couldn't do anything. They, their starting pitcher had seven walks. Their infielders were standing around waiting for a strike. And the uh, train went off the track pretty early. Fink looks at second and deals. Ball three. I mean, post 77 didn't even have a hit to the third inning, and they were up 3 nothing. You know, I guess it's best to get that loss out of the way early in the season. Or sometime in the season rather than the postseason. There's a strike. Some oohs and ahs from... Uh, both benches, I think. One away, Gerard strikes out. Matt Gerard will step in. He had a tough game last week. He was a catcher. He sailed a couple of balls into the outfield. He had some balls get by him. He had the dirtiest uniform I've ever seen a kid have. He jumped right into the bath when he went home. There's an 0 and 1 pitch. Nice breaker by Ben Fink. Certainly is. Fink's had some great stuff the few moments we have saw him on the mound. Looks at second and is set to deal. Time called a very late timeout. Count will remain 0 and 1. Fink's smart to just throw the pitch rather than stop short in his motion. Now he's smiling at the bench. Fink was involved in a whole lot of interesting plays last week that maybe you'll be able to describe or people can go to the YouTube channel and watch that game. I urge everyone to go to youtube.com slash HCAMTV and watch the post-77 Hudson highlights from last week. Fink made an incredible play at third base. One and one. This is hit in the air, over to center field. That'll drop down for a hit. It's going to be bases loaded for Hudson, post 100 with one out. Big opportunity here. Dalbert. Not only was Ben Fink involved in a double play, he was involved in a, uh, I don't know what you would call it, a, some sort of cluster between the home plate umpire, the base umpire, a tag play, a no tag play, a, Runner out of the baseline play. It was a crazy play. The bottom line is the runner ended up scoring. But you slowed it down on the highlights so people can watch for themselves. That's right. Check them out. Chris Lennox steps in, the third baseman. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, 1-0. and oh. How... Short, do you think the leash is with Ben Fink? Obviously, the magic number is one for post 77 to clinch the first spot in the zone playoffs. What do you think their strategy is here? Well, one and uh, one. I think uh, Coach Obit's going to see how well they're hitting the ball pretty hard. So I think Coach Obit thinks they're going to score a lot of runs. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Just outside, says the home plate umpire. Two and one. So you got Noah Stewart at third, Connor Ogier home at second, Matt Gerard at first. One away. A strikeout would be big here, but it's a three and oh count. There's a walk. And a run comes around to score. That is not what you want to do if you're post-77. Ogier home up to third, Gerard up to second, Lennox to first. The RBI is in. Tyler Ogier home, the left fielder, will step in. Sorry. 
So, Jake Obed going to come out. Talk to Fink. A two to one game now. And I think, Larry, this is probably the last thing Post 77 wants this early in a ball game. A run walked in. No, Post 77's got some darn good defense. If they let Post uh, 100 put the ball in play, they can hold their own. Post 100 kind of light hitting down after the fifth in the order. Fink deals, ball one. But they can look like uh, killers if Ben Fink doesn't get the ball over the plate. The 1 0. Swing and a miss. One and one. Fink pitching out of the stretch with the bases loaded. Swing and a miss. One and two. Nice pitch there. A little extra oomph on that one. There's the one, two. Oh, just time. What, ha what happened? I don't know. You dropped something? That looked good to me. Two and two. Post 77's first and third baseman playing in on the grass to cut the ball off and throw the plate. The two, two. Hit high in the air. Over to left field. Caught. Runner from third stays put. Two away. Tom Cavanaugh, right where he's supposed to be, far cutting the ball off. Yesterday, he was involved in a double play, fly ball to Rankatori, runner tagged. Rankatori threw the ball to Dom Cavanaugh. He didn't hesitate for a second and threw to Sean Jewett to get the runner out from a double play. It was beautifully executed. Here's the leadoff hitter, Sam Stout. Hit high in the air, fair territory, and it is in the infield and caught, no problem. And that is going to wrap up the top half of the second. We will head to the bottom of the second. It is a two to one post 77 lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the second inning, stepping in is Cole Glassburn. Seven, eight, and nine do up for post 77. First pitch, ball one. He had a much needed weekend away with his girl, Olive Oil. They went down to Washington, D.C. Olive Oil? Yeah. Really? You, Olive. This is it up the right side, past the reach of the first baseman, a leadoff single for Cole Glassburn. That'll bring up Drew Rankatori. Yeah, she fed him spinach all weekend. Did she muscle that ball out in right field? His teammate. High school teammate, Drew Brancatori. They're hitting back to back. So Brancatori steps in, one on, no outs. Osher home set to deal. Down low. He was hitting some bombs in BP today. Drew was, but he's still running with that gimpy hamstring. Let's see if it's improved from yesterday. Kind of painful to watch. Down low. Do you think Coach Obid would have him in there if the hamstring was a serious factor, though? Coach Obid really doesn't care about the health of his ball players. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> if they take one in the eye for the team, that's all right. Wind up in the pitch. I disagree with you, but that'll get through, and that's going to be a base hit. Last burn up to second, Rankatori up to first. It's a single. Two on, no outs, Dom Calabrese will step in. A base runner with any speed at all would have had that, would have been standing on third base. But as we know from our high school and these Legion games, that kid can't run for beans. I don't know. I think he'd disagree with he's, you, Larry. He's, no, he tell me. Come right over to the camera and look right in and say, I'm slow as heck. Well, something else. Well, you know what? He could certainly hit. Yeah. Two on, no outs, wind up in the pitch. There's a bunt, and this is a fair ball. Up the first base side, now it's foul, 0-1. Heads up play by Chaves, because he would have beaten that out easy. Hey, 
The element of surprise. He's been a very good addition this year. Calabrese steps back in. Osier home deals. Bunt. Fair ball. Up the infield grass. Picked up by the catcher. Throw to first. Gets away. Here comes a run. And it's a three to one ball game. And the runner behind him going to be waved around. Here comes Rank and Torrey. Another run will score. Just like that. Four to one post 77. Calabrese reaches on a great bunt, advances on the error, two runs score, four to one Ashland. I don't know whether Calabrese did that on his own or whether uh, Coach Obed called for that bunt since he saw the first one laid down pretty nicely. But if he called for that bunt a second time, that's really good managerial decision making. Well, I wouldn't doubt Coach Obed with Really good managerial decisions. Right back to the pitcher. Throw the first, the flip, one to three. Out number one. Not sure why the pitcher was going to go overhand with it and decided to go underhand with it. Brennan Grover will step in. Still only one out, two on. Or one on, excuse me. Grover and Kavanaugh are going to be the two uh, studs in the Ashland bullpen next year hit high in the air foul he's more than a capable center fielder a four to one lead four post 77 here in the bottom of the second well this is sort of a repeat of what happened last week when Hudson started to get down on themselves uh, errors I wouldn't say that because the first four innings were very boring and not a lot of runs wind up in the pitch there's the ball. Yeah, but just that throw away by the, the catcher into the outfield, giving Calabrese third base. Well, if you are talking about the Hudson fielding problems, I agree with you. Right, and it just deflated everybody. The 1-1. One, one. Down low. Now you get a walk in there. You see bad body language from the uh, Hudson infielders already. They want a crisply played game. I don't blame them. Here's the 2-1. Hit high in the air, over to left field, and caught. Runner from third going to tag, and the throw won't even be close. Another run, four post 77, 5-1 Ashland. An RBI sacrifice flyout for Brandon Grover. Tom Calabrese scores. That'll bring up Jackson Hornung. Missed the three-bagger. Up high. He was mentioned in today's Metro West Daily News as one of the all-scholastics. Hit high in the air over to right field and caught. And that'll be the third out of the inning, but post-77... Plates three more runs. They lead it 5-1 to one as we head to the top of the third on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the third inning, a 5-1 to one lead for Ashland post 77. And it's been a great start so far. Stepping in is Michael Ryan, the shortstop. Up right to the pitcher, fake with the flip to first. One to three, four out number one in the third. Yep, the Ashland bench is all over uh, Mike Ryan. He was one of the vocal ones last week, even though he was the one that got hit on the shoulder. That'll and bring up Michael Chaves, the catcher. And he's a fiery player anyway. You'd love to have a kid like Michael Ryan on your team. Just don't want to play against a kid like that, though. The 1 0. So Fink got Michael Ryan to strike out his first at bat, and then a little topper back to him to get him the second time. Wind up in the pitch, fouled away.
I don't know whether Chaves is playing any baseball at Worcester State. He may just go there. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Set to deal. There it is. Sit down. One away. Uh, I think Sean Chua thought it was three outs. Excuse me, make that two away. That'll bring up Noah Stewart. Either he thought there was three outs or he was asking for the ball that came over it this way. Ball one. Ben Fink can relax a little bit with a four-run lead. Ball two. Fink set to deal. Up the middle. Handled by the shortstop. Horning throws the first. Got him. Six to three. Four out number three. We'll head to the bottom of three. Post 77 cruising along. They have a five to one lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the third inning, four, five, and six to up. Dom Cavanaugh takes strike one, zero oh and one. A five to one lead, four post 77, cruising right along, but still early in the game. Set to deal is Osier home. Wind up and the pitch, down low, one and one. Osier home, a sidearm pitcher. We found out before the game that uh, Kavanaugh is a big rap fan. And this is up the left side. Obed can't make the play. A big error there by the coach. One and two. Did, did you know Dom was a big <laughs> fan of rap? Obed used to be able to make that play back a couple years ago when he was playing on the team. Up the middle, handled by the shortstop. Throw to first. Off the bag, safe. Kavanaugh reaches. I'm going to give him a single. It was a bad throw, but awkwardly hit ball. I'm giving him a single. What do you think, Larry? Uh, E6. As much as I like Michael Ryan as a player, I'd say E6. All right, we'll bring in Steve Watts to see what he thinks about that. He's here now. Sean Jewett will step into the plate. Steve, error or hit? I'm with Larry on that one. Oh, fine. I think because the throw. All right, E6. Way up the off, line. So, You know, Larry used to be Mr. Hometown Discount. Disappointed in you. Well, it, you know. Jewett had an RBI single in the first inning. Ball one. He had a hit which broke an 0 for 3 from yesterday. It was just a frustrating day at the plate for everybody yesterday. Jewett heading into the week was hitting a 567. He has just been tearing up the baseball this Legion season. Hit high in the air over to center field and caught. And that'll be one away. Kavanaugh stays at first. Amalfi will step into the batter's box. Amalfi, a good bat, man. Maybe they get a little hit run going. Gets a piece of this one. Foul. Is it catchable? Yes. I believe he caught it. No, maybe not. He didn't. Dropped it. Should have caught it. Well, I think he, he did catch it, but he was across that line over first base, across that boundary. That's our baseball expert, Steve Watson. Dr. Tom, Watson. Dr. Watson. Tom Nappy, Steve Watson, Larry Sacklett on the call. Tamron Tabo on camera. Wind up in the pitch. Down low. One and one. Quite a different story already from yesterday. Check swing, he didn't hold. There's a strike. Now Alex got to protect the plate. He's a good Batman. One All scholastic. 
Absolutely. Metro West Daily News is pictures of the paper today. The one, two. Two and two. Might be lucky to still be standing in the batter's box from our angle. A five to one lead, four post 77. We're here in the bottom of the third. Wind up and the pitch. There's strike three. Two away. That'll bring up Cole Glassburn, who singled his last time up. Scored on an error. I got to think Coach Obud's going to put Kavanaugh on the move. Fouled away. Bach. Really? Yes. Either he went from a full wind out or he didn't wind up or he didn't come to the set. Rare Bach after the pitch was called. That's a no count. That pitch will not count. All right, so it's 0-0. Thank you, Dr. Watson. A very decisive Bach call by the infield umpire. Osher Holm set to deal. Hit high in the air over to left center. That'll get down for a hit. And the runner, Kavanaugh, going to be waved around. He'll score easily, 6-1 to one post 77. An RBI single for Cole Glassburn. And Hudson is just... Uh... Not looking good with their fundamentals. Missing cutoff men like they did last week. And I don't know how much they practiced, but that should have been right to the shortstop for the cut. Post 77 picking up right where they left off last week. Drew Rancatori steps in. And just picture this. It's a 6-1 to one ball game right now. So if you... Uh, do the math. Let's do the math. So far this season, Post 77 has outscored Hudson 23 to 4. Fouled away. Three touchdowns to two safeties. That's right. right. Yeah. And with a win today, Post 77 will clinch the number one seed in the district playoffs. With a bye, if uh, post-77 wins today, when will the playoffs begin? I don't know the exact date, but I would like to believe that it would be on Saturday. Could you find out for the viewers at home? Of course, because that's what we do here. We find out the crucial information. So, Larry, go ask the coach. I'll go Osher. ask the general manager. <laughs> Osher home set the deal. Runner taking off, hit high in the air, into center field, and caught. That'll be the third out of the inning, but post 77 plates another run, and it is a 6-1 to one ball game as we head to the top of the fourth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fourth inning. Hudson post 100 coming up to the plate, 5-6 and 7 to up. Connor Osier home, Lance Chiraz, and Matt Gerard. Post 77 off to a very good start. A 6-1 to one lead. Wind up and the pitch from Fink. Ball one. One and oh. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson on the call. Cameron Table on camera. Nice evening here at Ashland Middle School. Down low is that pitch. Two and oh. So, Steve, a tough loss for post-77 last game. First loss of the season. And I'll tell you what, coming in to today, I just got a feeling that this team is just hungry to get back on the winning path. Yep. I think yesterday was just kind of a Sunday snoozer. You know, even the best teams are going to have a down game, and I think Ashland had theirs yesterday, unfortunately. 3-0 and oh, down low. Four-pitch walk. To Osher home. Yeah, I think yesterday just kind of had that vibe that it was going to be that kind of game, really not much happening. So, you know, and the thing is, it's so rare to go undefeated during a Legion season. It is. It's very hard to, to run the table, to, to even go 12 for 12. Well, two of them are forfeits, granted, but still, even that's tough to do. Absolutely. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. 
Oh, and one, two draws. Here is the 01 up high. Rumor has it uh, Ogerholm was uh, imported from uh, Norway to come over here and play ball with his brother. All right, that's not true. I don't have any information. But I checked with Rich Powell, the general manager, regarding the playoffs, and he told me to come back in a few minutes because it's just too much work for him to figure it out right now. But he will get us the information. And they can hear you, by the way, over the bleachers. Wind up in the pitch. Is that a good thing? Well, like I tried to tell you earlier, you're blowing my eardrums out. Well, we've got some hearing aids for you. Huh? There's a strike. <laughs> That's what I said. Now I can't hear anything. Got to go down to Miracle here. Oops. Can't mention commercial companies. FCC violation. Hit in the air over to oh. center. What a grab by Horda. Go to first. Double play. Right. Wasn't that great? <laughs> How about that for your eardrums? Two away. Matt Gerard will step in. And now he really can't hear anything. <laughs> I mean, he made it look harder than it really was, is what happened. And the base runner, mm, he was off the bag, that's all. Well, considering we're having headset difficulties, I figured I need to speak louder. Gerard steps in. For those at home, that's a 6-3 double play. Oh. And it hit him. So one on, two outs. That'll bring up Chris Lennox. Well, Dr. Watson, since he was hit by the pitch, that does not count as an at-bat, correct? That is correct. That is would not count as at-bat, only a plate appearance. That's and true. Yes, an at-bat and a plate appearance are two different things. But it will count for his on-base percentage, correct? Yes. Lennox steps in, up the left side, grabbed by the third baseman, Kavanaugh. Throw to first, not a problem. Five to three for out number three. We will head to the bottom of the fourth post, 77, with a nice 6-1 to one lead here on the National Legion Baseball Network. And here comes post 77 back up to the plate. The Franklin Pierce student. Leading they things off, it is going to be Nick Calabrese. This is hit in the air over to right field. That'll drop down for a hit. Around second he goes. Is he going to head to third? Yes, he is. Throw to third. Oh, boy, he's out. Bad right. decision there. Great relay. Try to get too much. Good oh. cannon from Michael Ryan right on the bag. Coach Obid wanted him to freeze at second base, but he just ran right through the stop sign. That's not what you want to do. So in any case, that'll be... One away. Could result in a benching for running through a stop sign. So Calabrese thrown out. Sam Farrell steps in. That sort of quieted things down. Certainly did. Rare, very rare base running mistake by post 77. Wind up in the pitch. Up the left side, past the reach of the third baseman. Grab by the shortstop, low throw, he's safe. So that's an infield single for Farrell. That'll bring up Brendan Grover. And I don't think there's any doubt that that is a single. No doubt, yeah. Too deep in the hole right there. He would have had to make a great play to grab him at first. So that'll bring up Grover. One out, one on. Hey, 
There's a strike. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. One and one is the count. Set to deliver his Osier home. Hit in the air over to center field, and that'll drop in front of the fence. It rolls all the way to the fence. Lead runner being waved around. Here comes Farrell. He'll score easily. 7 to 1, post 77. An RBI double for Grover. Ball went to the fence. Ground rule double. Yeah, so that run will not be played. He'll go back to third. All right, there it is. He'll go back to third. An unfortunate mishap there. Obviously out of the control of Brennan Grover. He certainly did not want that to go over the fence because if it just rolled to the fence, that would have been an easy run. You know, I, I don't think it actually went up and over the fence. I think it went through the fence. Ah. It's, it's not a permanent fence here. It did take a couple bounces, so I think towards the end it just kind of How squeezed through. How inexcusable. That'll another reason Jackson why uh, it's another reason that some gasoline should be sprayed all over this field in a match lit. This is a horrible, horrible venue. I'm just calling it like it is. <laughs> why don't you tell us how you really feel, Larry? Well, if somebody's going to lose an eye over at third base. Osher home set to deal. There's a strike to Hornung. That just looked too juicy for Hornung. Hornung has an RBI base hit and a flyout so far. It wasn't just any kind of base up base hit. It was a stand-up triple variety. Fouled away. He's getting really greedy up there. He sees that, that ball looks like a watermelon coming in. He wants to bust it. Just like Gallagher. Yeah. sledge matic If he whiffs here... Uh, his teammates will go crazy. Fouled away. They will ride him the middle of next week. Set to deliver. Wind up in the pitch. Hit in the air over to left field. That'll drop down. A run is in his score. Farrell comes around to score, an RBI single for Jackson Hornung. Grover up to third. And just like that, it's a 7-1 to one ball game. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh. And you have runners on the corner, still no outs. Don't be surprised if he lets Jackson Hornung run. Got a good lead over there already. Kavanaugh steps in, gets a piece of this one over to center field, caught, runner from third, going to tag, the throw not even close, an easy run for post 77, Brennan Grover comes around to score, a sacrifice RBI flyout for Dom Kavanaugh. 8-1 to one post 77, Sean Jewett will step in. I don't know whether Hudson is just mailing it in or what. There's just like no energy coming out of that dugout. Here's Jewett. Down low. No, Cromwell goes to Franklin Pierce College up in New Hampshire. They have an excellent sports program, specifically baseball. Check it at first, almost. Ah, that surprised Jackson. He didn't think he had a pick in him. That was very close. Might have caught him napping. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. Okay, 
One and one is the count. Hit high in the air, over to left field, caught. And that'll retire the side here in the bottom of the fourth. But guess what? It is an eight to one lead for post 77. We will head to the top of the fifth. Ashland, large and in charge on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. All right, we are continuing on in this ball game. Top of the fifth inning, an eight to one lead for post 77. Due up for Hudson, nine, one and two, Osier Home Stout and Ryan. And what a performance so far by post 77. Ben Fink still on the mound, set to deal. That pitch is inside, one and zero. Oh. I was just informed that the playoffs will be in Natick, Massachusetts, just down the road a piece, a couple of towns away. At Mahan Field, they have lights. Wind up and the pitch, swing and a miss, Ooh. one and one. Wow. Quite the rip by Cromwell. And what day will those start, Larry? Well, that's a have two games a night. And this drop is in. hit in the air over to left field. That's a fair ball. That is going to be a single for Osier home. No chance for two there. They'll bring up Sam Stout. Cromwell, no threat to steal. So one on, no outs for Hudson. So we do have some uh, Holliston fans with signs. And this is foul. The big contingent there with signs for Andrew Sternick. Well, you know, big white placard with a heart on it that says Andrew. It's kind of cute, don't you think, Tom? Love it. But the Hopkins fans are too snooty, so they have to sit out there in right field. You know, the upper crust out there. <laughs> the 1-1. One, one. Hit up the right side. Handled by the second baseman. Flipped to the shortstop. Throw to first double play. 4-6-3. Uh, Steve, I think Glassberg could have just ran over and touched the base and thrown over, don't you think? But he wanted to make sports center top ten. Right. Yeah. Web jump. That was beautiful. I, you know, a pair of wet by Jackson Hornung. Yeah. He's laughing out there. Yeah. It was totally unnecessary. And here's Michael Ryan for the for <laughs> third time tonight. So struck four. out. Sorry, he struck out the first inning. Hit a comebacker to Fink. The second time up. And this is his third trip to the plate. Some inside heat there. One and zero. Oh. So a 4-6-3 double play. How fantastic was that? It was all right, like I said. Up the left side, handled by Kavanaugh. Throw to first. Not even an issue. 5-3 to three for out number three to the bottom of the fifth we go. Post 77 leading 8-1 to one on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Open. That's fine. Bottom of the fifth inning, due up for Ashland post 77, is 6, 7, and 8, Alex Amalfi, Cole Glasper, and Drew Rangatori. I don't eight know why Amalfi's hitting down. 8-1 lead for post 77. We're First having headset pitch is problems. a ball. I'm talking over you because I can't hear you, even though you're talking well, as loud as Well, we're trying. I don't know Audio why Amalfi's hitting isn't seventh. Great. All right, here we go. Wind up and the pitch. Hit high in the air, and that is in fair, uh, foul territory, right side, caught by the catcher. One away. One of your more difficult plays to make. 
Then I'll bring up Cole Glassburn. He's got a couple of hits today. Quality broadcast with horrible equipment. Oh no. <laughs> is that the excuse? That's right. That is now I can hear you. Very uh, well the excuse. Sit for a second. Now I can hear every other word. Wind up in the pitch. Swing and a miss. You wouldn't have been able to get that one with a sandwich. Right, Steve? <laughs> Shout out to Connor Kelly if he's home listening to the game. Hopkinton's closer. Maybe a future post-77 player. Kid's got some real talent along with Josh Fisher. They were a real pleasure to watch this year. The 1-1. One, one. Inside, two and one. Both Fisher and Kelly, a teammate of Glassburn and Rancatori. Or El Presidente, as he's now known. Wind up in the pitch, swing and a miss. Two and two. He wants to think about that. That was about up around his eyes. Down low. Wind up in the pitch. Hit high in the air over to right field. To the wall. And that is going to drop in front. Rounding first. Heading to second. And it's a double. Cole Glassburn with the double. That'll bring up Drew Rancatori with one out. A uh, base runner with some speed would have had three bases on that. That ball was smashed. Uh, he should have had three bags, right? Oh, come on, Larry. Oh, come on. The ball I, I was up in the air for a mile. A hard time. Maybe he stood there and admired it. I don't think he did. Look at that secondary lead he's got with Michael Ryan coming in behind him. There's a strike. Michael Ryan looking at Chaves saying, hey, I'm running in behind the runner. Why don't you throw down? Wind up in the pitch. Hit up the right side, right to the second baseman. No one's at second base. Glassburn's safe. One away. Or make that two away. So it's a line out to the second baseman. Two away, runner on second. Tom Calabrese to the plate. No, Lawrence Tang to the plate. Oh, look at that. Or his teammates call him Larry Tang. So Lawrence Tang pinch hitting for Dom Calabrese. Lawrence Tang had a 359 foot double against Hudson last week. Wind up in the pitch. In there for a strike. He's a student at Belmont Hill, resident of Hopkins in Massachusetts. He's going to be a resident of somewhere to get on a Legion team, and Hopkins is one of the towns. Wind up in the pitch, down low, checking that second runner back safe. And as you recall, last week up in Hudson, Ting hit one all the way out to left center, fell, what, maybe about a foot short of that fence? They absolutely smashed it. And the dugout went crazy. They did. We went crazy, too. Tang gets a piece of this foul. Tang's going to be around for the next four years plus. Wind up in the pitch to Tang, and this is up the left side, past the reach of the shortstop lead runner being waved around. Here comes Glasper, and he'll score easily. An RBI single for Larry Tang, Lawrence Tang. And just like that, it is a 9-1 lead for post-77. 
here in the bottom of the fifth. Two outs, Sam Farrell coming to the plate, Tang on first. There's a strike. And this is up the left side, handled by the third baseman. Five to three for out number three, but post 77 plates another run. And they lead it nine to one as we head to the top of the six on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the six, three, four, and five, do up for Hudson. Michael Chaves, Noah Stewart, and Connor Ozier, I am. Louis, is that Louis Dennison out there for post 77? It looks like it is. If he drops down to the side. No, I think it's still Ben Fink. Yeah. Oh, it is Fink, excuse me. So the first pitch is in there for a strike, 0 and 1. You'll know it if it's Dennison, he'll be dragging his knuckles on the mound. Wind up and the pitch, 0 and 2. Chaves is having a tough time today. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been having some technical difficulties. Certainly want to apologize for those. Trying to straighten them out. Chaves steps in, Fink delivers. Up the left side, and it's past the reach of the third baseman. A leadoff single for Chaves. That'll bring up Noah Stewart, the first baseman. Now, Steve, just with, uh, to follow up on our conversation the other day about responsibilities, that base umpire didn't even see whether Chaves touched the bag, but yet he was running out towards the outfield to look for what? Well, it's his job to rotate to first and see if he touches And this the bag. is hit up the right side. That'll get into right field. Lead runner being waved over to third. The throw in is cut off, and it's runners on the corners. No outs for Hudson. We will have warm up action for post 77. Getting loose. Owen Ward. Is Owen Ward. And we'll have a conference here on the mound. Coach Obid and Jewett will go out to talk to Fink. Well, Fink has pitched a pretty good game up to this point. But running into a bit of a struggle here so far. We'll see if he can work his way through it. Stepping in is Connor Ogerholm. Wind up and the pitch, and there's a strike. Oh, excuse me. Fink takes a look at first and is set to deal. And this is hit up the right side. Handled by the second baseman. Throw to the shortstop at second. Throw to first. Double play. 4-6-3. How about them apples? Oh, Two away. Nice apples. That's their third turn today, right? I believe you are correct. We had the uh, line drive. Turn. That's the second turn. Well, the line drive to Jackson. And throw to first is one. Yeah, you are right. That is the third. Okay. Jiraz will step in. And he'll get a piece of this one hit high in the air to left field. And the center fielder will – actually, that's Hornung that will cut him off. No problem. And that will be the third out of the inning to the bottom of the six we go. Post 77 with a nice 9-1 lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the sixth inning, a 9-2 lead for post-77. 2-3 and 4 do up Brendan Grover, Jackson, Hornung, Dom, Kavanaugh. Against Cromwell. 
Cromwell is the pitcher. He came in last inning for Hudson. First pitch is a ball. Replacing Ogile. Oh, that's the Celtic, Shimmy Ogile. I'm sorry. Aaron Cromwell on the mound. Ogier home. He's hit in the air, foul territory out of play. Good hustle from Lennox. One and one is the count on Grover. Here's the one one. Fouled away, one and two. Coach O bid flashing signs down to his hitter. Wind up in the pitch. Gets a piece of this one over to center field, right field. And that is going to go off the wall. Grover over to second, and it's a stand-up double. A stand-up double for Brandon Grover. No outs. Jackson Hornung stepping in. See, if we, we were at a better facility, that would have been a home run rather than this. No talking to the media. <laughs> that was pretty close to a home run, probably the closest I've seen all year. So Jackson's seen Cole almost hit one out. A home run in front of him. I think Jackson's got designs on launching one. He's that kind of kid. The 1-0. Hit high in the air over to left center, and that is caught by the center fielder. Runner at second stays put, one away. I don't think Coach Obed wants to rub it in, so he kept his runner at uh, second base. I don't think he could have advanced mm, I anyway. I don't agree with that assessment. You don't? No. No. Nope. Why didn't he tag up then? Because it was a good throw. It was a very good throw. Dom Cavanaugh will step in. Larry was I disagree. For the I'm outvoted. Season. I'm outvoted, but I disagree. A 275. The fans have voted. Dom Kavanaugh has the best hair. <laughs> That's the report I get. Well, that I think we could all agree. I on. agree. I agree. The best moss on the team, Dom Kavanaugh. Best hair on the announcing squad belongs not mine. to Steve Watson. <laughs> well, that's not saying much, is it? It's really not. <laughs> the best derriere on the team, <laughs> Sam Farrell, according to the fans. The 0-1. Hit up the left side. Fair ball. Grab by the third baseman. Throw to first. 5-3 to three for the out. Throw to third. And it's not in time. Grover advances, but there is two away in the inning. Sean Jewett will step into the batter's box. Good rotation by Ryan. Sees third base abandoned. He moves over from a shortstop position to cover for the throw. Well, post 77 has brought the bats alive today. No ifs, ands, or buts. Wind up in the pitch, up high. One and oh. Do we have a pinch hitter? I think we do. Oh, we do, excuse me. Andrew Sternick? Andrew Sternick is correct. Andrew Sternick stepping in. And he'll hit this one in the air. And it's up the right side, caught, no problem. And that'll wrap up the bottom half of the sixth inning. But it is a nine to one post 77 lead. Hudson down to their last three outs, heading to the top of the seventh on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the seventh inning, a 9-2 lead, four post 77. Well, let's see, Tom, whether Ben Fink can retire the Hudson post 100 team and whether there's an eruption of celebration for clinching. If the Ashland zone. wins today, they do clinch the number one seed in the zone playoffs. 7, 8, and 9 do up. First pitch is a ball from Fink. 
That was an errant and, throwback by and, Jewett. And Larry, how about Ben Fink today? He's just how about a Ben Fink game. today? He's pitched a tremendous game today, Larry. Yeah, he ran into some trouble early. Coach Obid had a conversation with him, and he's been rolling right along ever since. The to help of some defense. That's a hit batsman. So lead runner on for Hudson. Nine to two lead, four post seventy seven. Who's getting the Gandhi tonight? Will it be Ben Fink? Might be. Gotta win first, Larry. That's right. I know. It's not over till it's over. Will Ben Fink think about picking over? Chris Lennox steps in. Down low. Runner takes off from first up to second. Pass the ball there. And with the scoreless bottom of the sixth, that's the first time Hudson has held Ashland to a scoreless inning in the two matchups. Well, who well, do you uh, vote for the uh, coveted Gandhi Award tonight there, Steve? Well, I'm going to vote post game. Oh. Because it's not over yet. I'm going to vote Steve Watson. The doctor. Well. The doctor. The, doctor the doctor's in the house. <laughs> I'll vote Cameron Tabo. Great camera work. Wind up in the pitch. Up the left side, takes a hop, and it's going to be grabbed by the second baseman, throw to first, they get an out. So Gerard advances to third, but Lennox is out four to three, one away. That'll bring up Tyler Ozier home. Great job right there by Cole Glasper. That was a weird bounce that one took, but he stuck with it. Made the play. Good Certainly work. was, and it looks like we have a pinch hitter here. This is Aaron Cornwell. Well, he was up uh, last inning, or earlier in the game. He's the pitcher. Oh. He got on base, but wasn't able to go anywhere. Wind up in the pitch. Inside. Ashley will concede the run to get an out. He deals. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Just overpowered him. Fink did. Ben Fink just dealing today. And Larry, what a performance it's been by Ben Fink. Gets a good Hudson lineup. There's a strikeout. Or no, he tipped it. Excuse me. There's no scoreboard down okay, here that at this would be the beautiful field. Out, though. It, it was, but apparently he tipped it. Down low, full count. Yeah, it was a foul tip, but then he went up and made that sign. Usually that signal strike out. Here's a little trivia for the fans at home. There is a scoreboard here. But it's buried in the woods. And that, well, you can partially see it now. They've chopped some, some trees and branches away. They have buried, buried it in the woods. You got a nice slap by the coaches there. Up high, there's a walk. But will they start using it? Assuming they can trim these branches away. I think it's electronic scoreboard. It is. That's like asking if Larry's going to take over for Jerry Remy. The answer is probably no. <laughs> what are the odds on that one? <laughs> just, leave Vegas, me, right? just leave me alone, okay? <laughs> Although, I'll tell you what. Larry, I'd rather have you than Jerry Remy. How about that? Let's watch the game. <laughs> Stout hits this one in the air, right side. Caught by the second baseman, runner from third stays put, two away. Michael Ryan will step in. That's feeling here is somewhat anticlimactic. I don't know whether there's going to be an eruption. Steve Watson's favorite player stepping to the plate. That's right. Ashley and Legion's favorite player stepping to oh, the plate. Yeah. Hasn't done anything today. Zip makes some decent for defensive three. plays. He's kept his cool today, though. But if uh, he First dings him down low, it will get ugly. One and oh. Better keep it that way. 
Fink has pitched an absolute gem so far Well, tonight. then why are you ruling him out for the Gandhi? I'm not ruling him out for the Gandhi. Nearly a, a back pick there by Jewett. Oh. Great throw. Just the tag was a little too slow at first. That was very close. Awesome throw, though, by Jewett. Good move. Here's a 2-0 by Fink. Runner with a lead down low. 3-0. and Now, Cromwell has no chance of stealing. Now, Larry, looking at Fink's performance today, I mean, do you think he's a candidate for the district playoffs and on fourth from there? Uh, he's down the depth chart, I think. You have oh, to go he's Gustafson, a very good game against a great Hudson lineup. There's a strike. No, I'm talking about down the depth chart for Ashland 77. You'd have to say Gustafson 1, Amalfi 2, Kavanaugh 3. Well, of course, you know, it's tough to, for us to predict it because we don't know the availability. you got to get there first, of, too. That's right. But we're just talking about playoffs in general, and he there's went. a walk. But we don't know the availability of Gustafson oh. and Amalfi yet. For the postseason. That hasn't been revealed to us. That was a gift right there. That would have set off some fireworks if he got rung up. Don't Merry you think, Christmas. Steve? So it is bases loaded for Hudson. There is two outs. Michael Chaves, the catcher, steps to the plate. I think the base umpire has his little smile on his face, too, because he thinks he knows he blew the call. Down low. Umpires have kept control of this game. Not a lot of chirping. Nope. A 92 lead, four post 77. But the bases are loaded for Hudson. There's a strike. One and one. Threw in a curveball for good measure. Said hit that. There's a beautiful pitch, one and two. Down to their final strike is Hudson Post 100. I can feel the crowd ready, getting ready to erupt. Well, actually, I can't feel anything. Fouled ah. away. What'd you think about that pitch, Steve? He let pitch, all the gas out of the uh, hose. Got a piece though, and he lives on to see another pitch. But you know what Fink was thinking. Oh, I'm going to gas this kid. Pull him away. Right. I so said, that's, that's what you want to do. It's a chance to close this thing out. He wanted a strike out to end the game. He's digging into his glove for something. Hit high in the air, over to left field, and caught. And that'll wrap things up. Ashland post 77 has clinched the one seed. In the Zone 5 playoffs, they win it 9-2, to an impressive victory over Hudson Post 100. They lost yesterday against Bill Ricca, but right back on the winning track is Post 77. They are now 13-1 and on the season. They pull off the 9-2 to victory over Hudson. For Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson. On camera, camera table, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball on either HCAM and Hopkinton, WACA in Ashland, or HCAM and Allison. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.